about almost for a year now. Um, and it's been working wonders for guys going on a ranger. I don't know if you guys heard about it yet or not. If you haven't, I think you would, if you talked about it around Benning, um, Franco, you're out at Bragg. That's pretty cool. I'm out at Bragg too. So we should probably link up. I don't know if you've heard about it yet, but anyway, um, this fitness program is, is something that I definitely think you need to look into. Um, I definitely think you need to attain it in some way, but, um, it's on the gritty soldier website. And so I want to talk about why it's the most, why, why is it the best program? Why do I think my, my Ranger School program is the best? So first of all, you guys all know that uh, Rap Week has a 32% drop rate, okay? And, and that's obviously it's, it's mainly because of the physical events. Guys just aren't hacking it. They're going in there. They don't really, they weren't properly trained. They just spent most of their time in the gym just getting big and they didn't exactly have any sort of direction to get them, to get them better. They might've even trained up really hard, but they just didn't, they didn't do it right. You know what I mean? They didn't, they didn't train for the long haul. They didn't train endurance enough. So just keep that in mind as I'm going through all this. Um, so 62% drop out of rap week. Th this, this program is going to get you squared away for not just rap week, but the entire Ranger school um, itself. You're going to be squared away for the entire time you're there, whether you're there for <laughs> two months or you're there for a year, you'll be physically ready. And that'll be one less thing you have to worry about. So number one, this program is um, comprehensive and structured. It's 13 full weeks of day-to-day -day training. Um, every workout's gonna be uh, provided directly for you. So you don't have to worry about what you need to do that day or the next day or the next week. It's all gonna be right there laid out 13 full weeks. Okay, that's, that's a ton of time for you to get ready. Um, all you have to do is put in the work and just follow the program as it says, you're gonna do fine. Uh, number two, it's, it provides you the full spectrum of fitness. Okay, so training is gonna be focused um, on improving endurance, number one and also some strength and speed, but it's gonna maintain just the right amount of recovery to avoid injury or overtraining, which is really important. A lot of guys, again, they don't really know what they're doing. Um, they think they just need to go balls to the wall, but they end up like hurting themselves or they set themselves up for failure when they get to school. You've, you've probably heard a lot of guys that get to rap week and they end up busting their knee or they hurt their back. That's because they overtrained or they just didn't train properly. They didn't take enough rest. Um, I can promise you this program won't give you a whole lot of rest. You're gonna be feeling it, but it's gonna be just enough so that your body isn't overworked and you're still, you're still making those gains and getting ready for Ranger. Uh, number three, there's gonna be uh, minimal equipment that you're gonna need, all right? So all you'll need is basic gym equipment, which I know you guys down at Benning have. You're gonna have, uh, you're gonna need barbells, a uh, bench, squat rack, and dumbbells, that's it, okay? So your basics. Um, you'll also need a pull-up bar and your rucksack, okay? Those are the only things you're gonna need in order to be able to do this program uh, to its fullest. Um, and then last, uh, number four, the most important aspect to me is that it's tested, tried and true. So this program has been utilized by hundreds now of Ranger candidates who's got, they have nothing but good things to say. I've, I've yet to hear anything bad about this program, uh, from somebody that's used it. Okay. I have tweaked it here and there just to kind of finesse it a little bit and, and always improve it. Right. You always want to be improving, but all in all, the program has stayed pretty much the same since I've built it. And again, it's tested, tried and true, not only by a whole bunch of people that have obtained the program and, and completed it and completed Ranger School successfully, but also by myself. So that, that's what I really want to say is these all great soldier workout programs, um, the, the thing that makes them stand out between some of the others that you'll see out there, especially like with Warrior Fitness and fitness geared towards soldiers, is that there's not a whole lot of fluff. I, I just take the fluff out of it. OK, I just tell you what you need to do tell you how you need to do it, make it so that it's understandable for you. So you don't have a whole bunch of questions and just go and execute. You know what I mean? A lot of these programs, you see a whole bunch of scientific uh, mumbo jumbo that really doesn't, I, I'm here to tell you, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference because I've been through all that stuff when I trained for Ranger, when I trained for um, best Ranger, a lot of that stuff, you don't need it. And it's just more confusing and more, it's going to drain your mental capacity uh, when you're trying to, when you're trying to get fit. Okay. So number one thing I can tell you about this, uh, <clears throat> what makes it stand out between the others is that it's going to be easy for you to understand. It's going to be easy for you to execute. Um, and you're going to have fun doing it. I promise. Um, it's going to hurt, but you're definitely going to be ready um, at the end. Again, uh, another big thing that makes a difference between uh, some of the other fitness programs and some of these other fitness programs, forget the, uh, the endurance aspect, which to me is the most important aspect of getting ready for Ranger school. You have to remember endurance. You have to remember that Ranger school is not, a sprint. It is a marathon. You're going to be there for a long time. And you're going to be hurting the entire time. So this training program is geared towards making you ready to be able to handle the long haul physically. 
You're going to be able to carry that ruck for miles on end. You're going to be able to um, use those legs, walk up hills, walk up mountains, you know, do whatever you need to do. And you're going to be the guy that's going to be able to carry extra shit and, and, and not have a problem when it comes to peers, just because you use this workout problem. I guarantee you that. All right. So um, with all that being said, uh, I don't really have too much more to talk about. Um, I don't want to take up any more, more time. I probably went over my limit there. Um, but if you have any more questions, I'll hang out. And you just let me know and I'll answer it. Thanks, Dan. Vince, are you with us? All right. You got me now, Patrick? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Is Nicholas Cavado still with us? Can you, can you talk to us a little bit, Nick? See, I'm muted. I'm here, sir. Okay. Congratulations. You just won yourself an army duffel. Uh, it's the ready packs version of the army duffel. And I'm going to kind of put it under camera here. Uh, this is a standard army design, but it's got a YKK zipper, heavy duty zipper. The inside has got vinyl lining and it's reinforced on the seams. Uh, we took the Rothko bag really and the army bag and just did a bunch of improvements to it. So this is the ready packs version of the army duffel and you need to drop your uh, contact information into the chat box so that we can get this sent off to you on Monday. If you want it, you want it. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Thank you for joining us this morning and congrats. Thank you. And so with, with that, let Patrick. me turn it over to Patrick. He's going to talk about mental preparation. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, thanks, Vince. Uh, before I get into that too much, Nick, thanks for joining us again today. I'm the one that you spoke with yesterday, and I'm glad you're able to make it this morning. And, and uh, hopefully we made that worth your while. Yes, sir. So, again, I want to say thanks to Dan. Uh, Dan, you said a lot of things there that, I mean, I'm already more motivated than I was when I jumped on the call, and it uh, dovetails nicely into some of the things that I want to speak about. So I will, I will be judicious with the time, but I've got five things I want to go through on mental preparation for Ranger School, and it goes hand in glove with what Dan was talking about. So the, I've got five things I want to go through, and the number one is that you should gather information recon, gather intel. And part of that is what you're doing right now. You're on the call, you're listening to people like Dan who have the experience, you're listening to people like Vince who have spent thousands of hours speaking with rangers and doing research. And you're learning from your peers and you're gathering the intel to be ready. You're turning the unknown into a known. So that's, that's good to continue to do that. Think about what's gonna prepare you to succeed in ranger school, not just at layout, but all the way through. So that's the first thing. Second thing, attention to detail. What do you need and what will help you prepare to succeed? Looking at your gear, looking, thinking about your physical training regimen, thinking about what you need to do to prepare yourself for Ranger School mentally and physically and with the gear. And one thing I'll recommend is you think about using a checklist and a checklist is different from a packing list. A packing list, and I'm sure you've all seen it on the ARTB website. It's got a lot of really bright colors and bold writing and do this and don't do that. Well, with Ready Packs, we've taken that and we translated that in and transitioned that into a checklist so that it's manageable and helps you prepare. Checklisting is a team event. So think about how you prepare yourself mentally. And it's all about, I'll go back to what I said before, turning the unknown into a known and taking away some of the fog of war that you're going to experience at Ranger School when you are when you know that you're prepared mentally. So that's the second thing. The third thing I alluded to, and I'm sure Dan and others on the call can attest to this, Ranger School is not an individual event. It's a team event. So as you're preparing for this, think about how you can use your leadership to build those teams, to work with your Ranger buddy, like, like Dan said, preparing yourself such that you're able to be the one that people can count on, and also knowing when you need someone else's help and building the relationship up front so that you can partner with your ranger buddy and with the others in your, in your, on your team to get yourself through. And that's part of your mental preparation is understanding that it's not an individual event and how, what are your strengths? How can you help the team? And where are the areas where maybe you're gonna lean on some other folks? So think about that as you're preparing. 
And number four is attack the task at hand. Ranger school is 61 days. And let's, let's be honest with each other. Fewer than half of the people that go into ranger school go straight through. There is a high likelihood that you're going to get recycled. That's a huge hit mentally. It's good, you're going to have to be strong. You're going to have to prepare yourself. There's going to be failures in ranger school. Even if you do go straight through, there are going to be times where you fail. So what you got to attack the task at hand. You can't complete all 61 days at once. You're going to get to day 20 and you're going to be exhausted. Don't extrapolate that fatigue out linearly over the next 40 days. It was, it's demoralizing. You got to take what's in front of you, break it into smaller pieces and attack the task at hand. And that's a skill that you develop through practice. You can do that in your physical training. There's going to be some of the programs that Dan suggested to you. There's going to be times where you want to quit. If you just take the next step, put the next, your foot in front of the other, that's part of that mental preparation for ranger school. The fifth thing I'll say is think differently. You're smart, you're fit, you're determined, and yet there's still gonna be times when you fail. So you need to think differently. And I'll just refer you to B.H. Liddell Hart. He's a military strategist. He was a soldier in World War I. He was a military strategist in the early part of the 20th century. I won't go through the whole story, but the, the summary is, is he studied 30 conflicts, 280 battles, and in those 280, only six of them, 2% resulted in victory from a direct attack. 2% from a direct attack. So think differently, look at different options and find victory in the unexpected. And that's a mental preparation to be able to train yourself to think that way and be open to possibilities. So the five things, gather information, turn the unknown into a known, attention to detail, recommend checklisting as an option, investigate bad and Vince will talk more about that in a minute. And Ranger School is not an individual event. Prepare yourself to work with others, to build those teams, know what your strengths are, know where you need to lean on others. Think differently and look at other options for how you can achieve victory. I appreciate your time this morning. I'm glad you're here. We're here to help you and serve you and help you prepare to succeed. Vince, back to you. Vince, are you with us? Okay, so let me see if I can get Vince in the chat. Uh, but we're gonna transition to talking about the gear and he's gonna highlight a couple of the items. Okay, and... you got me now? Yes, sir. Okay, sorry about that little glitch. Is Ethan Jewell with us? Is everybody unmuted? Ethan Jewell. Need to hear from you, buddy. I can see him. Yes, sir. There you are. Guess what? You just won an Army issue balaclava. Awesome. Just by showing up. How about that? Thank you, sir. Where are you, Ethan? Where are you sitting? Fort Benning. Fort Benning. All right. Are you going to Ranger School in March? Uh, probably closer to May, sir. May. Okay. So I want to use this opportunity to talk a little bit about the, uh, the Army issue balaclava, which you should see here in, on this camera view. There's three ways to tell that this is an army issue balaclava. And before I go any further, uh, the army issue balaclava is a critical item. The Ranger School packing list is, is broken into three parts. One is critical items, next is required items, and then you have optional items. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the items that Ranger Pack includes. This is, a, this is an add-on that you can buy or not buy from us, but whatever you do, make sure you show up with the original, you know, the real deal army issue balaclava, because if you don't, you will be dropped immediately. And that's the kind of the definition of a critical item. You don't have it, you're gone. So the temptation will be to buy a lookalike, uh, an acrylic version that costs $8 and wherever you find it, eBay. So there's three ways. The, the army issue uh, balaclava is 85% wool. So it's heavy and it's, it's really good quality. You'll know it when you pick it up. 
The second is there inside, there's a white tab with an NSN number on it. It looks like that. And that's a good telltale is when you see the NSN number. And then the third way is it has shoulder cutouts. Some of the fakes have, or some of the lesser quality ones have the shoulder cutouts too. But if, you, if it doesn't have these shoulder cutouts, then you can be sure it's not the right item. Just be sure you get one that's the um, authorized Army issue one so you don't get yourself in trouble. So Ethan, congratulations on this. And um, um, you need to make sure you put your contact information in the Dropbox so we can get this mailed to you on Monday. Does that sound good? Yes, sir. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So we're going to get into a little bit about talking a little bit about what Ranger Pack is. So Ranger Pack is a, an assemblage of probably 120 line items at, on the optional and required list. It, it includes most of the optional items. So the first thing I want to talk about today is the weapons kit. So you see the weapons kit here and it folds into this nice little pouch. And it's, it is an absolute premium quality AR-15 M4 uh, specific gun cleaning kit. It includes everything you see here and what you would typically see in a, a gun cleaning kit, but it also includes this instruction guide. So you guys on the phone today are doing a good job preparing yourself psychologically and mentally. Just being here shows us that you, you know, you're serious about preparing, but there's going to be somebody next to you that didn't take as much time to prepare. And maybe it's a new recruit. And maybe it's somebody that's never, you know, cleaned an M4 before. So this instruction guide will be a good tool to help, you know, guide through, you know, the cleaning process. This gun cleaning kit also includes the scraper tool, which I'm told is uh, invaluable for the M4. Um, and then in addition to that, this all, you know, these are the star chamber cleaning felts. Um, people rave about this, this gun cleaning kit. Some people say, that is so nice. I'm not taking it to ranger school because I'm going to save it for another, another day. Don't do that. Make sure you take it with you and use it. Okay. So that's, that's what the gun cleaning kit looks like. Now, what we do is we add some things to it. So instead of Q-tips, all of you guys love Q-tips, the more, the better, right? So we're taking a, a pack of 1000 Q-tips. Well, we've discovered that these swabbits work pretty good and they're lighter. They're easier to keep track of and they're reusable. So all you have to do is rinse the tips out and then you got them reused. They don't leave any felt on your gun. So uh, it, it just works pretty good. These are like sponge tips with longer handles. And so they get into areas that are hard to reach and they work out really well. And that saves you room in your ruck or in your uh, duffels uh, that you would otherwise fill with Q-tips. So that, that's Swabbits. And we have a one ounce bottle for CLP. Um, it has a very fine tip for direct application of your CIP. It does not include the fluid, but you can get the fluid anywhere pretty much and fill this up and get ready for what you're going to need in the field. We include 100% um, uh, cotton rag, which people like to use to wipe off and bore snake and things like that. And then finally, one of the most best parts of our weapon kit is this brush. So some guys take what they call a razor, uh, what do they call it, a shaving brush which is a short stubby thing that you, you know, they, in the old days, they used to put shaving cream on your face with it. And I guess in some places they still do that, but we found that this is a better application. This is a, a paintbrush with kind of a rough tip on the bottom and it helps you get inside your chamber and other places that uh, that other brush may not reach. So you'll need this in Florida because you're gonna get sand on your, on your gun. And then I guess a final piece uh, of the gun kit would be these plastic bags. Uh, we call them gun bags, but they're they're really just plastic bags that are the size needed to put your M4 entirely inside this bag. So you just put your gun inside and you make a hole for the mag chain, uh, the mag release, and maybe the the ejection port and and the trigger, and then you put duct tape on the back to seal it up. And now you've protected your weapon from the rain and the sand and everything else you're going to be experiencing. And I'll tell you something. This is not new, it's not our idea. They were using gun bags in World War II. Uh, if you look at some of the old um, vid video footage of the landing at Normandy, a lot of the soldiers had their guns in canvas bags. And we have pictures of that. Leslie has done a good job of finding the history on it. So that's the gun bag. So together, this is all the gun cleaning kit that's included in Ranger Pack. Um, now the next item I wanna talk about is the hygiene kit. I'm not gonna go through every item in the hygiene kit, and this is a pretty comprehensive hygiene kit as far as hygiene kits go. Uh, there's about 40 items inside here. 
and then you have the bag itself. You're not going to want to take this whole thing with you into the field. So there's a smaller pouch that breaks away. So you take the small pouch and put that in your ruck and that lasts you a shorter period of time, but everything you need for 62 days is included in the, in the kit itself. Uh, it includes things like a nail cleaning kit and a nail brush. Of all the things in the Ranger Pack, I've had com more comments on the nail brush than you can imagine. Uh, and people, you basically destroy your hands in Ranger School, so taking care of them is pretty important. So anyway, if you wanna go small, you pop this pouch off and put it in your ruck. And when you're in garrison, you can use this hook and hang it up onto your rack or in the shower or anything else, and you're good to go. So the hygiene kit is one of the things we do. At, at Ready Packs, we focus on kitting. So when you get Ranger Pack, it's not just stuff thrown in a bag, it's all unwrapped and prepackaged for you, so you're ready to rock. So that's, that's what we do, and the way we do this is we use a process called, that we call checklisting. Checklisting in, always involves more than one person, so you can use this technique when you're in patrols or you're out in the field. It's, it's really just a bi-directional communication with somebody else. Like, do you see what I see? Yeah, I see what you see. Man, that's amazing, I see this. So that's a three-way communication. Uh, and so you can imagine how that can be helpful when you're talking about ammunition and water and food. Uh, did, you, did, you, did you count the water? Yes, I counted the water. Are you sure you counted the water? I counted the water. How much water do we have? We have you know, 20 gallons. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure, I counted it, I'm there. Okay, because you're my water man. All right, so that seems like a silly conversation right now. But when you're exhausted and you're leading the group, you can't depend on yourself. And so what checklisting does is it creates a, a team, a, a good team um, vibe because everybody has ownership of their thing. And then it also helps you as the team leader uh, achieve your ultimate objective, whatever that is. So that's a little bit about ready packs. Uh, I can talk to you till the cows come home about every single detail in here. So for, let me just give you one example and then I'll be quiet and we'll open it up to questions. But had a question this week from a gentleman that was actually in ranger school. He finished Darby, went on holiday block leave, came back, was in quarantine and sent an email. And he said, hey, you know, it'd be really awesome if you put one of these guys in there. This is a Statler correction pen. Well, this pen retails for three, anywhere from $3.59 to $5.75 online. Okay, so what we, one of the things we try to do with Ranger Pack is give you what you need at the lowest pro possible price. So you can get this fancy correction pen, but inside your TPK, your tactical planning kit, we include one of these guys, just a standard Mark I Mod Zero Expo dry erase marker. And so this is your eraser marker. That's why it's in there. And all you do is scribble over your Mac, map markers with this and wipe it off and voila, it's gone, just like an eraser or, or a correction pen. The difference is this costs us about 50 cents and the correction pen costs us you know, $3. So that's one way that we um, keep our costs down. And the gentleman that contacted me was not aware of the use of the Expo marker. So this gets back to what Patrick said about doing, you know, changing the unknown into the known. So do your homework. Think ahead. When you get a Ranger pack, go through every single item and say, why is this here? Why is that here? How do I use that? A lot of people ask about the chalk. Why in the world is this chalk in here? What am I going to use that for? Well, I'm going to let you guys figure that out. And then we also have another kind of chalk, which is the stick chalk. Why is that in there? So there's a reason for all, every single item in here came from soldiers that went before you and told us what to put in here. So nothing is random. This isn't just a, gee, I think they might find this handy. That's not how Ranger Pack was, um, that's not what, how it's built. That's not how we decide what goes in it. We listen to soldiers that tell us what to do. All right, so that's enough about Ranger Pack for now. We can answer all your questions as we as we open this up. So Leslie is going to open the field to questions, and we have two soldiers with us from Fort Bragg today. We have Riley and his compatriot Andre. Uh, Riley finished Ranger School in March of 2020, and uh, my understanding is that Andre finished in November. So the reason they're here is to talk to you a little bit about what it's like to go through Ranger School in the era of COVID, and what you know what's it like in quarantine, and what's it like. You know, what are they thinking about in terms of resupply? Because you don't get a Darby pass anymore. So you can't go refit right after Darby. So Riley, let me tee you up and ask you, what did you do in quarantine? And what was that like? And was it like a drag or did it go fast? You know, what did you think about that? Go ahead. 
Good morning, Vince. Uh, unfortunately, Andre lost comms and he's trying to get back up right now. I went through during COVID. However, we were not made to quarantine uh, in between phases uh, or after anything. So I'm not able to talk too much. I apologize for that. Um, I'm not able to talk too much on that piece. I can answer any questions that anyone comes up with, but I'm going to wait for Andre to get his comms back up before I give any false information. Okay. Well, what was your experience in general like when you went through in March last year? What did you experience? Did you go straight through? Did you recycle? I was lucky enough to go straight through. I didn't have to recycle. I was able to take advantage of my refit in uh, Darby and then obviously and I don't know if quarantine is going to affect um, you guys in phase two because there is like a small exchange office on base. So you should be able to have access to that with or without uh, COVID. I think uh, Andre's up right now. So if he can hear me, I'm going to hand it off to him so he can talk that quarantine piece. Okay. Andre, are you with us? Andre? Vince, I don't see him on the participant list. Yeah, okay. okay. He uh, he, he, he's not able to, uh, but I, he texted me all the stuff he, he wants me to tell you guys about. Okay. So he said, um, he said basically the way COVID affects you directly is um, you have to wear a mask around leadership 100% of the time. Um, you can still eat in the defect as you normally would in ranger school. Um, all the classes are open. They haven't, um, no classes, like uh, there was some rumors about not being able to repel and some other things, not getting the full experience. Um, that is false. All classes are open and the courses um, will be provided to you. Um, all the obstacle courses are still a go. And basically, the only thing that's going to be affected is prior to going to ranger school. Um, I'm, I'm aware that the Bullock students are going to have to quarantine uh, beforehand. Is that correct, Vince? Yes, that's right. Okay, so they need to make sure that they have all the supplies and everything they have prior to that quarantine because they're not going to they're going to be um, legitimately quarantined within the compound. Okay, you got anything else? Other than that, they can expect not to get the, uh, the Darby Pass in phase one. And that should be the only two things that um, are directly, that directly affect any students going through during COVID unless um, things loosen up or change from here and March. Okay, great. Thank you, good feedback. I wanna make sure everybody is on open mic now, Leslie so that we can open it to questions. Um, so uh, are there any questions about Ranger Pack, what's included, what's not included, about anything about the physical fitness piece for Dan or about the mental fitness piece for Patrick? Go ahead to the field. Are you seeing these items that are packing with individually? I'm sorry, you broke up. Say that again. Do you sell any of the items for the packing list individually? No, we do not. What what item are you interested in in particular? Weapons cleaning kit I was interested in. Oh, you can buy that online. It's made by Real Avid, uh, and, and it should retail for about $33. I've seen them in different sporting goods. I've seen them in different retail stores around. Um, it's called the Real Avid Pro Pack. And you should be able to find that online, Amazon or whatever, if you want to buy it. Okay. Thank you, sir. What other questions do we have? Alexander, are you still with us? Uh, yes, sir. I've got a question. Okay. This is Riley. Go ahead, Riley. Um, so I also wanted to confirm 
maybe a question that's popped up is can you order stuff online uh, for example amazon while you're during like during the quarantine phases and stuff and you are not able to order anything online however you can still receive care packages from uh, friends and family in the past typically you don't start receiving stuff from your family until after you send out that first postcard letting them know which company you're in however if you there is the address online for uh, for fourth arp tb and as long as your name is on that the ranger student's name is on that and the address the mail will find you whether you're in quarantine holdover recycle uh, whatever phase you're in it'll find you because it'll go to fourth rtb first so i urge you to have some supplies at home, maybe like pack your own care package prior and then, you know, you have your family send it to you if, if it's needed during your quarantine phase. Okay. Were you quarantined at Camp Cornette or is that where they're quarantining? Uh, I was not quarantined at Camp Cornette and I cannot confirm whether or not Andre was, was there as well. Okay. The reason I'm asking is we ship ranger packs to RTLI all the time. I don't know exactly what's happening there. Uh, there must be an NCO that's recommending ranger pack because we get these orders in swarms. And I think this past week we shipped, I don't know, five or 10 of them to RTLI. And I think that's either at Cramp Fournat or very close to. And they're communicating, uh, they, they're making the orders online. And then we ship directly to Camp Cornette where it's received by the uh, duty officer at the desk in the front. And then he just messages the recipient, they come up and get it. So there's no personal interaction from a delivery guy, but anyway. Awesome. Yeah, that, that's perfect. I'm just, I'm just saying uh, as far as someone getting on their phone and making a direct transaction on Amazon is very unlikely. Okay. And uh, Andre was not, Andre was not quarantined at Camp Cornette. So uh, I'm not sure. Okay. That's uh, what I'm assuming is the Bullock students will be um, there. Anybody who's going to a pre-ranger will do their quarantine on the front end prior to showing up at Camp Rogers. And then as soon as they get there, they go straight into the course. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, all right. So is Kiana with us still? Yeah, Vince, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. So, Kiana, I want to um, give you the floor a little bit. Uh, obviously, I don't think you have any questions because we've talked so much, but I would <laughs> like you, for you to talk a little bit about what you've done with Ranger T, why you did that, what you guys cover, and uh, how it's helping. Go ahead. Sure. So, near the beginning of iBullet, my class started in uh, September. So, it was a little ways ago. We started talking about different ways to prepare for ranger school outside of iBolic itself. Um, because there, there were a couple of times where the cadre stressed that iBolic is to prepare you to be an infantry officer, not necessarily a ranger prep program. Um, and because of that, a bunch of us started talking about different ways that we could prepare on our own. So one of those was the academic side. Um, I don't know if anyone listening has downloaded the Ranger Pro app, but it's on the app store, it's like five bucks. It has all the, the 20 boards that they'll cover in Ranger School, along with videos of RIs teaching them, and then also the RI narrative that they have and that they read. And so our intent was just to have a couple guys um, brief the Ranger boards, maybe two a weekend, and then just kind of go from there. Um, and what's happened is it's actually, grown where we've been able to get captains from the captain's career course in to give us insight we've been able to talk to people who recently graduated um all in an effort to better prepare for ranger school and possibly fill some gaps that i hasn't really been able to vince is there anything else specifically or Oh, I think you're muted. There we go. Well, uh, we're learning as we go here a little bit. Um, <laughs> so how many people come to your Ranger T and what is the, how long does the meeting last and uh, what, what have you found in the way of engagement and enthusiasm about it? Yeah. So it started off with me just throwing a, a chat into our platoon group chat. Um, 
and then there were about five people who showed up the first weekend. All numbers are in accordance with COVID law down at Benning. Just want to throw that out there in the beginning. Um, but the last time it's grown to up to like 24 participants. Um, well, that was still allowed here. Uh, and then there are also significantly more people spreading past different eyeball platoons, companies, and then also uh, class start dates. Um, we've got people in our group chat who may not be able to attend physically, but who've been keeping posted with uh, the different lessons that we'll put into a Google Drive that we have um, and that are going to join up as soon as they get down to, to Benning. So it's growing in ways that are unexpected, but we're, we're adapting. Okay. That's good. Good background. Thank you. And I, I tip my hat to you because uh, I, as I've told you along the way, uh, we've been doing this for four years. We've provided hundreds and hundreds of packs to both ranger schools and sapper leader course soldiers. And I've never heard of anything like what you're doing, which is kind of branching off and preparing yourself on your own, taking it, upon yourselves to make sure that you're prepared for ranger school and you're you're benefiting from the group effect uh, different experience levels different perspectives different uh, sources of questions it's going to pay huge dividends to you and your crew and i really hope we uh, find a way to continue it when you leave so okay so any other questions for any of the participants or any of the uh, speakers anything about the packing list Okay, so then let me talk about one more item, and that will be the headlamp. So I'm going to camera two, Leslie. Okay, it's on there. <laughs> so the headlamp is probably one of the most important and valuable pieces of equipment that you're going to take to Ranger School, and it's important to pick the right one. So you can get an $85 Petzl lamp that, you know, does backflips and has all the different colors, and you're not going to need that. All you really need is a headlamp with a really good red he headlamp or he red light that goes, um, let's see, hang on. You're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, so do you want me to un unmute camera too? Yep. Okay. So this is the Viz 250, it's made by Princeton Tech. It comes with three alkaline batteries, but in your battery pack, you'll, you'll get 10 um, uh, lithium energizer batteries that can all you know also work in here. But the important thing about the headlamp is you wanna make sure you go to red right away without having to go through white. So, you know, that's basically one push gets you to red. And then if you wait about two seconds, the second push gets you to white. And then there's also different intensity levels on this. So if you go to red and, and, um, and hold it, it will go max bright and then it will go all the way down to dim. So depending on what your situation is and, and you know, if you're out on land nav course and you're gonna do a lighthouse, you're gonna want max red and you're definitely not gonna to wanna to go through white. So that's the Princeton Tech Viz 250, and you get two of them in Ranger Pack, uh, along with the batteries that come with them and extra, you know, and then in the lighting kit, you also get extra, a lot of extra batteries. So that's the, that's the headlamp. So Riley, if you're still with us, what kind of headlamp did you take and why? Okay, how about Dan? Are you still with us, Dan? Oh yeah, absolutely, Vince. What do you think about headlamps? So I was just looking at that, and that's that's a pretty good headlamp for Ranger, uh, simply for the fact that you're never going to use white light in Ranger. And I like that that function goes to the white, uh, or the, I mean the uh, red light first, because a lot of times you'll be so screwed up mentally and physically and everything, you just don't really know what you're doing, that you'll accidentally hit the white lens, and that's like just drives everybody nuts. So our eyes would be all over you. You could get a no-go for that, all that stuff. So that, that headlamp's pretty legit. And I really like that you can go bright to dim too, because if you're just in an OP like planning, you're going to want to be real dim um, at night. Most, a lot of ranger school happens at night. So just think of it that way. Okay. Um, these headlamps are going to be money and that's a, that's a pretty good one. Um, I, okay. my approach was I just took like a whole bunch of headlamps that I've acquired over the years. And I took like one really good one. So that way I had like plenty of emergencies, but yeah, that anyway, that's, that's, that's pretty good. I want to use this opportunity since I'm talking to you guys before um, you're, you're done, Vince. I wanted to say, um, Vince talked about how, how I personally came across Ranger Packs um, and that he actually showed me this like on an individual basis. He did the whole layout, went through every item. And I was pretty like thrown off at first. I was like, that's a lot of stuff. I'm not sure if I'm going to need all that. 
Um, and it seems like it's, a, it's got a pretty good uh, price tag on it. And that was like my, I was, I was concerned with that. So what I did was I went with my wife that day, sat down and did an inventory of like every single item that Ranger Pack had and saw the cost of it and how, the cheapest I could possibly get it, added all that up. And I want to say, I say getting the Ranger Pack, if I just would have got it in bulk, like how Vince is doing it, I saved like $450 or something like that. So it's definitely cost effective. And I can tell you from experience that all these items, like every single item has a use at Ranger School and you're going to be happy that you have it because you're going to have things that other guys just don't have. So you're either going to be able to like use it yourself or you'll be able to let other uh, Ranger buddies use that item, which is, I mean, pretty critical because it's all about teamwork. Um, and also a lot of this stuff you'll have after Ranger School, which is no problem, especially since you guys are iBolic. I mean, I'm, I'm here to tell you, like you're going to use the majority of the stuff in the, in this Ranger pack, you're going to keep using it. I still have a lot of stuff in my Ranger pack in my garage. I pull out, pull it out all the time. You know, like the, all the things for uh, planning. I mean, I, I just use that at triple C. I use some of the stuff for planning, some of the markers, some of the books, all that stuff. Like I, I pulled that out again, use it for triple C. You think I bullet hard way till you get to triple C with the planning, um, all the stuff for the field. Like you're going to be going to the field all the time, man. You got, now you have all the stuff. It's kind of a no brainer. So just kind of look at it that way. It might be a big hef, like a price tag up front, but you're going to be using this stuff all through Ranger School and for years to come. So I just wanted to say that. Well, thank you, Dan. I appreciate that endorsement very much. Yeah. So, okay, so we're moving toward our close, unless there are further questions from any of the participants. You, now is your last chance. We have open mic. Okay, well, thank you for joining us on a Saturday morning. I think we're going to try to put this up on YouTube so you can refer your buddies to it uh, at a later time so they can watch it at a later time. This is the first attempt that we've, we've uh, first, our first try at doing this remotely. So obviously we have some improving to do, but for the first try, I thought we did pretty good. Uh, I want to thank Dan and Patrick for joining us remotely. And thank you to all of you for your interest and for your advanced preparation for what you're getting ready to go to. So thank you. I wish you all the best and stay in touch with us here at ReadyPacks. Thanks everyone.